labels and values. So what's the difference between a label and a value? A label is a cell with text in it, with a text string in it. Okay, a value is a, well, uh, a numerical value. So anything that has a number in it. So that's what you call a value. Now, the reason why we need to know that is because sometimes, although nowadays, Excel is smart enough to identify na yung number is not text. However, there are times where it doesn't compute, you know, the formulas doesn't compute, possibly because it is set up or yung format niya is a, a text instead of a number. So it might not recognize it as a number if the formatting is set to text. Now, where is that and what am I talking about? If you go here, yan, so if I, I highlighted one, two, and three, you go to the home menu and under the home menu in the number section of the ribbon, you have the format there. Yan. And it might be set to text. You guys can see my screen, right? Yung, yung ina highlight ko na menu. Okay, just want to make sure. So sometimes, may I click ko lang real quick. So sometimes ganyan, no? If I click on a certain cell, <coughs> excuse me, it will show up as a text. So your formatting no cell is a text instead of a number. So when I do a calculation, it might not run. The reason why I say it might not run is because Excel, again, nowadays, recognizes na in number nga yan, no? Hindi naman talaga siya text. So if, uh, if I involve um, that specific cell in a calculation or in a formula, it would still compute. Okay? So we, But we just need to be wary about that. All right? Let me undo that real quick. Baka makalimutan din natin. So there, that's why we talk about labels and values. Editing data. Um, in editing data naman, uh, more on uh, maybe, uh, <clears throat> sorry, us being reminded that there are different ways on how to go about editing a cell. So um, for starters, like if we are going to change the word labels and we correct the case, okay? So uppercase L. So what I can do and what I'm usually used to is double clicking on the cell, All right? Let me, let me zoom in a little bit now. Okay, so double clicking on the cell so that the cursor uh, will be available to me. I will press delete and then change that to uppercase L. You guys can do that as well. You can also edit by pressing F2, just like so. Although when you press F2, the cursor will be at the end. You can also change this or edit by going to the formula bar right there. Okay. So there, um, edit data, um, adding rows and columns. Um, you simply go to a row. Let's start with rows na lang muna. Um, right click and then press insert. That will insert a row. You go to a column, do the same thing. Right click and insert. That will insert your column as well. Okay. Now, one of the most overlooked function in Excel is checking of spelling. Now, um, I'm pretty sure because you guys are used to using Excel and being that you're in advance, no, alam yun that I call santo. But for the most part, when I teach this, no, for different clients, sabi nila, meron palang check spelling option. And some of them would say, now what they do is they copy, um, you know, parang information out of Excel. They put it in Word. Di ba sa Word, merong auto-check, nagiging red yung misspelled words. Tapos, ibabalik nila kay Excel. So, when I thought this, wait, parang, oh, meron pala noon. I didn't know. Kasi they, it made their lives so much easier. So, yes, there is an option. The shortcut key, in fact, for that is F7, no? Yung checking of spelling. All right? Another way to do that is if you click on review, there's a check spelling option. Yeah, it's the first one, in fact. All right. So let's do that real quick. Um, while you are you are on ano ba to? in G9, okay, cell G9, press F7. Oh, yeah. It will suggest what it thinks the spelling should be. All right. So just like what you have there, it's suggesting to change the word chech to check. Now, um, what I would recommend, especially if you're working out of a big file, is that you go through this still, um, parang one change at a time. Why? Because um, even if 
Excel recognizes it at, as a wrong spelling. Baka naman name siya ng person. Okay? So, Chech might be, you know, Chech Aribe might be a name. So, that would be valid. However, if we click on change all, hahanapin niya lahat ng word Chech and change it to the word check. So, that's why I would recommend that you do this one at a time. Okay? Nevertheless, um, depending naman, no, if, if it is applicable for you guys to click on change all, then by all means, go ahead and do that. For now, we are going to click on change because it's a one-time deal. I'll click that. And it's going to the second one that is misspelled. And it would suggest yung proper spelling niya, just like what we have here. Okay. And since we're going to take that, I will click change. And it's going to ask me this. Do you want to continue checking at the beginning of the sheet? And the reason why it asked that is because we specifically check on the spelling for one cell lang. Okay. So let's say we're going to do a yes here. But of course, wala namang ibang wrong spelling that's the sheet natin. <clears throat> it's going to say it's spell check complete and we're good. Okay. Now, ang sakit naman ng Excel users is that we don't necessarily trust Excel immediately, no? So even if it says, oh, tapos din check spelling, hahanapin pa rin natin yung mali, right? Um, especially if we're copying something, no? Um, like before, I remember when I started learning this as well, what if I copy this, tapos meron nakahide na rows? Anong mangyayari doon sa hidden rows? Does it get copied as well? Diba? So I don't trust it. I have to review it manually pa. Okay, and the thing is, over the years, uh, I'm pretty sure you guys would be too. No, um, I learned how to trust Excel. Ayan. we have to trust it. All right, but from time to time, you know, it doesn't hurt to check it. But but yeah, for the most part, trust Excel. That's what's its job. Well, that's its job. Yeah. All right. Switch between Excel views and create custom views. Um, for the most part, this is where I go to change the views, especially if I am going to print it. No, in the lower right hand corner, currently we are at a normal view. And the next one would be page layout. Literally, how it would look like if you print your sheets. And the next one would be yeah, page break view. Uh, this is what I like um, because it would still look like a sheet, but it is already divided into different pages. Also, if I want to move a line here, just like what you can see, ito lang yung gusto maging page one, it adjusts it for me. Yeah. Okay. So there, um, page break because, well, pages are broken in here and that is the view. Okay. Anyways, let me go back to normal. Yeah. All right. Another way you can go about doing this, and you know, I, I, we mentioned um, redundancy in Excel. You can click on the view menu and you can change this one. Especially if you're working out of a very, very big file, what you can do is click on a certain cell, tapos click on zoom to selection. And what it does is it would maximize it as much as your screen can take. Okay. And, but Definitely, we don't want to do that because, well, we're only seeing about four lines here. So we want to go back to 100% view. Again, under the view menu, you'd simply click 100. Or you can scroll up, scroll down, depending on how small or how big you want your font to be. Um, you can also do that in the scroll bar right here. Or you can press the plus minus button to adjust your view as well. All right. So that's a zoom, set up print, and a preview your workbook. So kind of like what we did since we went to the page break already, we saw what it would look like. But um, to go to the print section, again, control P is your friend. That's your shortcut key. You can click on show print preview. And what I like about the print preview nowadays is that you can scroll through them and see the different pages that it would come out of. And and um, like uh, I mentioned that I work at night as well. What I would usually do, naman, like my boss would require me to, you know, uh, maybe save some files into PDF. So this is what I do. I print it out as a PDF. So it doesn't go to a printer. It goes to my computer as a file in PDF. Okay. Yeah, choose your drop down now. Oh, and another thing, like if you want to have a selection, a specific selection, 
from your table to be printed. Kunyari, we are going to print just these. Yeah. So I highlighted one to five. If I print that, if I go to print, so I press Control T, I'll click on the settings here, the first one in the drop down, and click print selection. Yeah. Drop down, print selection, show print preview. It should print just the area that I highlighted earlier. All right. Yeah. Very simple. Then I click print, and then it saves to PDF, or you know, you can choose your printer from here. Okay. Go back. Autofill and autocomplete. So, guys, here's another uh, no, no. Here's another interesting thing. I know you guys are very familiar with this and might have been your best friend for a long time. You know how it is when kunyari completo natin to hanggang December. You know what that small square, diba? Yun yung click and drag natin to, to go up to, let's say, December. Yan. Do you guys know what that is called? So, like, hey, Mara, can you click on that square thingy? Pero ba ganun? Does anybody know what that um, is called? Autofill? Autofill. Uh, what, what we did, what we did is called autofill. Yung small square na yan. Meron, meron scientific name yan. <laughs> Galeng, no? <laughs> Nobody really bothered. Um, but yes, meron pangalan yan. Meron ideas? Ideas? Okay lang ko, wala. <laughs> okay, it's called the fill handle. Fill handle. Yes, amazing, right? Meron palang name yung small square na yan. And yeah, it's called the fill handle. All right, now that we know, ano ba ang difference ng autofill and autocomplete? Autofill is like kind of like what we did, no? We used the fill handle to automatically fill out the rest of the months until December. Okay? Now, autocomplete is if Excel recognizes that as something that you typed in before. Like, I'm going to type in JA or the starting for January under December, JA. And this is an autocomplete. Yeah. Okay. There. Yeah. So, this is what you call autocomplete. I'm going to not use January for now. I'm going to go to the values this time, highlight one, two, and three. And instead of clicking and dragging, another thing that you can do, and again, you might have stumbled upon this already, is I can double click on the fill handle and it would go to the bottom of your table. Okay, it would click and drag to the bottom of what it recognizes as the end of your table. Right? <clears throat> so, kunyari, meron siyang break, no? Wala siyang laman sa July. Let's, let's experiment. So, I'm going to do that. Yeah, hanggang June lang siya magka-copy. Bababa. Why? Because there's a break in the table. It recognizes, Excel recognizes this as a, this one, August to December, as a separate table na. That's why when I double-clicked it, it didn't go all the way down to December. Now, if that's something that you still want to do, and I'm double-clicking it right now and nothing is happening, so there are times that it does happen. So what you do is you just click and drag down to December. All right. There we go. And lastly, applying borders, um, considering na walang laman or walang border C values natin. So we can do is highlight all that, go home, and then click on this, the font section and apply borders. All right. There we go. So we did all of these under the basics. Um, label columns as months. So let's change that real quick. Let's overwrite labels and change them to months. Remove the grid lines and what we mean by grid lines. And, and this is mostly for presentation purposes. No? And because we in Excel, we would always need the grid lines to guide us no, as to what we're clicking. So what you want to do is click on the view menu, 
and uncheck grid lines. And so now it's cleaner, no? So whenever you send it out to other people, your report or your presentation, you can simply copy and paste it there without those annoying lines. Especially if you paste them as a picture, no? Yeah. Okay. Now let's go to number three. What is the last word within this worksheet? Does anybody know how to do that? Or to check? And I don't know if you noticed earlier, no, when we printed it out, there are actually five pages here. Back to my fifth page, because the fifth page contains just the one word. Okay. Anybody? How many, do you have an idea how to go about it? How to go to the last word? Wala, okay lang din naman. <laughs> but you press control, or actually you press and end. Okay. One more thing. Hindi siya nag work sa akin. There are versions of Excel wherein that doesn't work. It might work for you guys. Can you try real quick? End or control end. So while you are on that box, you can go to control end. Did it work for you guys? Okay, Mar Mara says yes. Okay. Don't worry, I'm not going to ask you to share your screen anymore. We believe you. But yes, there are, <laughs> there are people where in their versions of Excel that would work. No, I don't I don't know. It worked, it worked before. Now it doesn't. I don't know. Maybe it got an update or something. But yeah, that's how you go about using or, or going to the last word in the worksheet. This is extremely helpful if you are working out of, again, no very, very big tables. You want to go to the last one and highlight that instead.